Haleluya, Haleluya, Haleluya. Baruch Shem Kivod, Malkutov Leolam Vaed. Blessed be his great, high, holy, and exalted name. Shalom, Shalom, Mishpachati Od Ba'am. I am Rabbi Binyamin Halevi Kohen, coming to you once again, April 27th, 2014. Yo, Mashallah Kim, how we feeling? How we feeling? I'm here with my queen Adira as we are continuing to return to the land as we have been doing these past seven weeks now. So we wanted to just update you as we do on a weekly basis. The things that we are doing, I pray things are well with you. We're now two weeks, two weeks into the counting of the Omer. I hope you're doing that. As we came out of the high holiday season. Yokai, Adira! Yokai. Yokai. I just wanted to just briefly show you before Adira gets into our lesson for the day. Again, spending time. Spending time in the land. I'm sitting here now in our small little part of our garden. And just this morning, it is a bright sunny day, as you can see, about noon time. Uh, about 55 degrees. It's warm. But as I was just sitting here, connecting, I observed over these uh, little growing area here, a couple of observations. One about insects. And I was going to be talking about the uh, insects and pests and so forth. But as you sit out here just for a few minutes, moments, I pray that you do that, you will notice small things like ants. Like spider webs, um, feeling the earth. There are various different types of vegetables and plants and flowers that are here. And just like raising a child, as you spend time, you will observe the small, subtle differences. Some of these plants, just by the touch, soft touch you can feel how soft they are or how hard they are and you can really tell but such as this one is looks a little dry if it needs water just by touch so I just wanted to share that little bit with you as we what reconnect to the earth there's much that we can learn by using all of our senses. That's what I want to say to you. Using our eyes is one observation. But touch is another sense that you may not know the names of the plants, but you can feel and know the differences of these plants. Guess what? Whether it needs water or not, by touch, not always just about observation. You can hear the sounds around you play an important role in all of this development. How this all ties into us is in our daily lives. We'll explain that a little bit later to you. But I wanted to share that with you. It's an enjoyable to just spend just five minutes, if not even 15, 20 minutes, if you just sit in the ground for five minutes start this that process of developing I believe a closer relationship with the earth and with the creator hallelujah hallelujah Queen Adira Shalom 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 Mashallah Mac Shalom Shalom I need to hallelujah hallelujah Look it is a little wonderful. chilly. He said it's warm, but it's a little chilly out here. That's it's a little chilly today. I have my gloves on. Uh huh. But um, further to the conversation about touch and observation. Yes. Um, when you come out into your garden, mm -hmm. you want to know the difference between your herbs mm -hmm. and your weeds. Now, sometimes um, you'll know right away, depending upon if you have already been out here to um to to do your inspection sure but i have a lot of herbs that are already growing up 
and one of them is dill. Mmm. Oh yes, I was feeling that today. And the dill is really, really very soft when it starts to come up. Yes, I noticed that. And it is, uh, it, it is very um. It's a weed, so it doesn't. Take it doesn't long. feel like a weed. I think a weed would be something hard. It doesn't take long to just fan out all, all over the place in your garden. So things like this, if you have a nice bit of land that you're growing on, you can take it and um, put it out in, in, the, um, in, the, in the dirt, in the lawn, you know. But if and we can you don't eat have dill, right? Lot, yeah, it's an herb. If you, if you don't have a lot of space, you probably want to use a pot and put it in a pot because it will grow and it'll spawn and it'll be all over the place. Another reason, another thing that you want to make sure of is um, your dandelions. I see they're coming up all over now. Your dandelions will come up all over. And um, dandelions are high in vitamin K, so it's good for your skin. We can eat those too. Now, you can't eat all, um, you can't eat all weeds, but dandelion is one of the weeds that you can eat. You can eat all of it. You can eat the flower, the stem, the root, and the leaves. Wow. So certain... Um, that's certain the dandelion. Things, yeah, certain things that you can Here's make. a good looking one. Out of dandelion. And um, <laughs> one thing that you want to make sure of is that you don't put pesticides, weed killers, okay. um, so, uh, growth enhancers on your food because they end up in your body. You got to tell him about your garden helper here. He likes the camera now. Oh, this is this is Cat Brownie. <laughs> he's, he's older than a lot of us. <laughs> But Amazing he still gets cat. around. He's uh, he's very healthy. He's in tune with the garden. Yes. So certain things will come up in your garden, and you have to be take the time out to understand what they are. This would be something like a weed. Mm. Okay. So you want to get that out. Okay. It's in the onion family, so uh -huh. it grows up like an onion. I see. It looks like an there's onion. an onion at the bottom there. What's that? It's a weed. Okay. Okay. So you want to get that out because they will take over also. Okay. So different things like that you want to get out when they're young, because it's harder to get them out when they're, uh, you know, mm -hmm. when they had a time to get the root established. Mm -hmm. Things like this. These are peonies, so you don't want to take anything like that out. Get them a flower. To grow. This is a flower. Mm -hmm. it grows up like a tulip, but it's a very big flower when it comes out. Mm -hmm. This here and these here are all lemon balm. Mm. And it's very much similar to lemons, that smell, mm -hmm. okay, but it's high in vitamins, okay, vitamins and minerals. So you want to put things out and things like this, they grow all over the place. They will take over. Mm-hmm, lemon balm. So you, if, if you don't have a lot of space, you want to make sure that you put it in a pot, otherwise it'll be all over. See, you have dill. Dill is growing up within the, uh, mm -hmm. the bed of lemon balm right here also. So that piece of... It smells lemony. Yeah. Mm. And, and order smell to that freshness. Smell it, you just have to rub, it, rub the leaf a little bit and put your fingers right to your nose. And you get that really, really great smell. Mm -hmm. You put that in a nice... Um, you put it in a nice, uh, like, drink. Mm -hmm. Lemon balm, spearmint. Lemon balm and spearmint is what I grow, so... That's what I'm drinking most of the summertime and the springtime. That's excellent. Lemon balm and spearmint. So it's drink. companion. It complements your vegetables. Yeah, companion gardening and intercropping is one thing I wanted to talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, these, these are different types of techniques that you can use to keep away the pests and the rodents mm -hmm. out of your garden. Mm -hmm. So intercropping is a system where you plant a row of flowers, mm -hmm. herbs, or flowers, herbs, or um, help me out here. Flower, herbs, or vegetables, or vegetables mm -hmm. alongside each other. Right. Okay. Intermingle those. Intermingling. Mm -hmm. However, with the um, companion, companion crop, uh, companion cropping, planting the same in the same row, different, mm -hmm. yeah, different flowers, herbs, or vegetables in the same row. And why would you do that again? And you do that in order to repel rodents mm -hmm. or certain types of pests from the garden. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get your rows and you organize them nice and neatly. Mm -hmm. Figure out what you want to plant. And then you 
you to plant marigolds or chives, mm -hmm. onions, um, things like that in between your vegetables because when the rodents come out or when a pest comes comes out, mm -hmm. they don't like to they don't like to intermingle with certain right. types of plants. Right. So they won't come to the same Hey, plants they like healthy food too, right? They like healthy food. So too. when it comes up, they're gonna come to eat healthy just like you like to eat healthy. So mm -hmm. that's a technique. Yep, intercropping and companion planting. You'll probably want to look those two up also. Awesome, awesome. That's wonderful. So I pray that everyone has um, been keeping up here. And I see you got your pots. Yes, I'm waiting on the pots. This is spearmint. So spearmint will be growing in these pots pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Just like the lemon balm and the dill are about to grow. This one is a rosemary bush. Rosemary, all right. So I'm waiting to see what happens with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we also have our pots over here okay. that we're waiting we to see We got our sweet happens. peas and okra. Now, again, we talked about your seeds. Everyone got their seeds. Know the what? Maturity stage. Now, in most yes. cases, tell them about the maturity. When you get your seeds packets, mm -hmm. okay, you want to look on the back to find out how much spacing that, sh that they should be planted away from each other and mm -hmm. apart from each other inside the row. Right. Also, how much time it takes to, um, it takes to mature mm -hmm. before you should, you know, start to harvest them. So those are the types of things that you want to make note of when you put it in the ground. And they usually show them in days, right? Yeah. So like 70 days, 90 days. 160 days. 160 days. Or something like so that. So 90 days is what? Three months, Three months. right? So you do the math, 120 yeah. is four months. And even if you mm -hmm. get your little labels and you put them in the ground, you might want to put that on the put back the date on it? of your label. When you, That's smart. When you planted it, what you planted, and then on the back you can label when you planted it. Holy. So you don't have to remember. That's important, you know. And I just want to say one other thing to the family. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about timing. Again, we started this project, this, you know, uh, return to the land five weeks before Passover. Again, I pray that you are with us. You are moving. This is a new season in New Year. So I ask you today, how's it going? Are you seeing some newness in your life? What are you doing differently than you did last year? We have to continue to progress. There's a lot we have to change and we have to put set our goals to, to measure, right? That's what we're talking about here. We have to measure. There's a time element between this. There's seven weeks between Pesach and Shavuot. Two weeks have already gone. That means you're down to five weeks to Shavuot. So, prayerfully, again, you planned out, like we planted this garden, you planned out the things you wanted different in your life and you're working on it every day. Changing. Change is good. And you're doing something positive change. So your diet, after eating unleavened bread, matzah for seven days, changing, feeling healthier, right? Feeling lighter, feeling energized. I love it. Hear the birds chirping, hear the sunshine, and it's warming up. It's a glorious time. Get in sync with that, that energy, that season, that love, that your Kai spirit, Canada. Okay. So, our assignment for the week, next week, as we move forward here, a couple of uh, tidbits. A couple of tidbits for you, mm -hmm. okay, are if you haven't already done so, figure out what you want to plant, what you like to eat. Mm -hmm. Do you like to eat collard greens, kale? I love like it all. Eat lettuce. Um, Absolutely. In doing the little herbs, you know, herb garden mm -hmm. or whatever. Try to figure that out, okay? When you get your seeds, look at them. Make sure to say heirloom mm -hmm. or um, or uh, non-GMO, mm -hmm. okay, or organic. Look on the back of the packet and make sure when you look on the back of the packet, you're looking for not only how you space your seeds apart, 
but you look for the maturity. Yes, yes. Get your labels, okay? Mm -hmm. Because when you get your seeds, you want to make sure that when you plant them, you can label right away. Right, what right. You plant it. And put the name of whatever you planted on the label, and on the back of it, put the date on. So you excellent, have excellent. To, uh, so you won't have to have a hard time keeping up with that. Mm -hmm. And what about the watering? How is your watering coming? The temperature changes? Is that affecting what's happening here? Well, actually, the um, there, we had a lot of snow mm -hmm. this, this uh, winter. last winter. So the ground is nice and moist. It has mm -hmm. a lot of precipitation already in it. And we've had a couple of really, really good rains. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So uh, we want to do that, making sure that... Um, our, our land is our land is watered. Our garden is watered on a regular basis. We just come out, like the rabbi said, and make your observations. Yes. If it's already nice and, and soft, you know, you already see that there's enough water there. You don't have to water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're just waiting at that point right. for the seed to take. Hallelujah. To take and, and just like, around. if you will, a baby, because this is the very beginning stages. Get to know your baby. <laughs> Spend some time with your baby. Observe those changes. Keep it clean as much as possible. You'll feel it. You'll start to connect in. You'll start to see those differences. And most importantly, you'll start to feel the differences. Return to the land. And don't get frustrated. Hallelujah. If it doesn't happen right away, don't get frustrated. Just plant some more seeds. Maybe those seeds didn't work. Such Plant is life, right? And keep it moving. Keep it moving. Yep, you want to be on time with something to harvest. Y'all kind. Till next week, family. We love you. Y'all bless. Kind. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs>